I mean, tomorrow marks 18 years ago that Lisa Womble became Lisa Parker. Uh, it's a good day for you. I still am not sure why she made that choice, but I'm grateful nonetheless. Our reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Which says, therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. May God's blessing be upon us as we read his word and as we commit to carry it with us everywhere that we go. A waitress in town beams with excitement one Sunday morning. She's just learned that Jesus is coming to dine in her restaurant after church. She glances at the mirror as she walks by to check her own appearance her face looks a little tired and worn. It's been a long shift, and she was up all night with a sick baby. Tips have been slow, and she wonders how she'll make ends meet this month. Still, her enthusiasm grows as she thinks about the one who's coming to the diner for lunch. She remembers the story she heard about Jesus back in vacation Bible school as a little girl, and the way her youth pastor talked passionately about Jesus on those few Wednesdays when she happened by for youth meetings on Wednesday nights. She thinks about the unexpected pregnancy that led her to drop out of school and the weight of judgment that she felt the last time she walked into the church. But none of that can dim the glow she feels inside when she sees Jesus walk in the door and sit down at a table in her section. He doesn't look like the flannel grand pictures of Jesus that she remembers from her childhood. This Jesus is cleanly shaven and he's wearing a coat and tie. She approaches his table nervously, smiles at him, hands him a menu, but he seems to take no notice of her at all. Almost rudely, he asks a few questions about the menu and then he orders. A few minutes later, he's griping about how long the food is taking. The food comes and he receives it without even so much as a thank you. He cleans his plate, complains about the seasoning, pays his bill, and walks out the door. And it's then that she noticed that Jesus has left the restaurant without even leaving a tip. Disappointed, she droops her head and gets back to the rest of her tables, hoping to maybe get out a few minutes early so she can check on her sick little one and wondering how she'll pay for the prescriptions that he needs. Across town, a customer service worker at the department store works as fast as he can to settle issues with those in front of him because of who he's noticed standing at the back of the return line. Jesus has come to his store to return a Christmas gift. What an honor to have Jesus come through his line. It's been a long time since he's been in church at all, but Butterflies churn in his stomach as he thinks about the opportunity to meet the Savior of the whole world. He struggles to sort through the issues of the people in front of Jesus because they, the company's just got a new computer system and it's not working right. He can't figure it out. But finally, he, he, he gets all the people's issues sorted through and next in line is Jesus. The man's hoping to make enough money to go to school next semester, but tuition has just gone up and things don't look too good for him. But now there's Jesus standing in front of him. And he hopes with all his heart that Jesus can brighten the mood of his day. He motions for Jesus to come forward to the return counter. But he's surprised when he sees the frown on Jesus' face and the words coming out of Jesus' mouth that he hears are cold and even a little bit mean. Jesus taps his fingers impatiently on the counter as the young man struggles to figure the computer out. And finally, when the return is complete, Jesus grabs his money and he turns and walks away without a word. 
disheartened, the young man motions for the next person to come to the counter. And he wonders when this lousy day will end. Another man sits in his pickup waiting for the stoplight to turn green. The weight of the world rests upon his shoulders as a thousand things run through his mind at once. He's got unfinished important projects at work. He worries that he's not giving any of them the attention that they deserve. There are issues at home that need his attention too. He can't remember the last time he stopped to play with his kids or took his wife out on a date. Now he's just learned that his routine blood work that the doctor ordered has shown some troubling signs and the doctor wants him to come back in for more tests. And suddenly a loud blast from a car horn awakens him from his daydreaming and he realizes that he's failed to see the light turn green. Startled by the loud honking, this distracted man glances in his rearview mirror to see none other than Jesus shaking his fist at him. And urging him to move on. He's shocked. This is not how he expected Jesus to look at all. Surely it can't really be him. And the frightened man who's distracted from his driving. And a little nervous about the whole thing. Accelerates through the intersection. Glancing back in his rearview mirror. And sure enough. He sees the car turn into the church parking lot. The man shakes his head and he drives on, disappointed, discouraged, and a little more burdened by the load he carries, and frightened by the uncertainty of what the future might hold for he and his family. Now, as you listen to these stories, I suspect that you sit there thinking to yourself, Jesus would never do that. Jesus would never say that. It's appalling to even think of the Jesus we read of in the Gospels behaving And speaking in such ways. Just as that thought crosses our mind, we hear these words from Paul again. We are ambassadors for Christ. This verse summarizes Paul's ministry and and message. Paul says that he and his associates do what they do, say what they say, and write what they write because of their status as Christ's ambassadors. An ambassador is a representative from one royal court to another. An ambassador is one who is sent to speak and act on behalf of a ruler with the ruler's own authority. To be an ambassador for Christ is a big privilege and responsibility. And it's not a status that Paul claims for himself. He says, we are Christ's ambassadors. Notice that Paul does not say that believers should be or could be Christ's ambassadors, Christ's representatives. He says believers are the representatives, the ambassadors for Christ. All believers are commissioned as Christ's ambassadors, whether we accept that commission or not. The question is not whether or not we will be ambassadors, but rather what kind of ambassadors will we be? It is said that you are the only Jesus that many people will ever see. And what that means is that there are many people who will never happen into this pl- never happen to come into this place. There are many people who will never darken these doors. There are many people who will never hear me preach or learn the songs that we sing in our church. Despite the best efforts of the Gideons, there are many people who will never go into a hotel and open the drawer and open up the Bible and begin to read the words of the gospel and meet Jesus that way. There are many people who never take the time to watch a crusade on television, but many of those same people are looking at you and looking at me and reading the fabric of our lives. Some of these people are on our kids' sports team. Some of them will cross our paths at school. Maybe we work with someone in that predicament. We may be the next Jesus that sits in that waitress's section. We may be the next Jesus in the customer service line at the department store. We may be the next Jesus stuck behind the distracted driver at the traffic light. What kind of Jesus will they see? 
this side of Christmas as we head into the new year, I think it's important we ask ourselves such questions. If we are the only Jesus some people will ever see, what kind of Jesus are we showing them? What kind of ambassador for Christ lives in our home, speaks to our spouse, relates to our kids, works with our coworkers, and interacts with our neighbors? What kind of representative of the kingdom of God sits in our pew each Sunday? What kind of Jesus do people see in us? Right now, there's a teenager in our town who needs to meet the Jesus that we know. Will we arrange that invitation or will we show them a judgmental, distracted, cranky version of the Savior? This holiday season, there are families that are struggling through depression and grief, wrestling with complicated relational dynamics that compound their feelings of sadness. These families need to know the compassion, concern, love, and mercy of the Master. Will we show them that Jesus or will we let our own self-centeredness keep them from discovering that there is a God who loves them dearly? This morning, one of our neighbors likely woke up wondering if life is really worth living. Will we help them see the one who can give their lives true meaning or will we show them a Jesus who keeps God's love like locked tightly inside the church? In his book, The Jesus I Never Knew, Christian author Philip Yancey describes the experience of leading a class in Chicago through the study of the Gospels. And in this class, in a really interesting twist, they, they read the Gospel stories in the New Testament, and they also, interestingly, watched a set of movies that had been done throughout the ages on the life of Jesus. And they kind of critiqued the movies in the light of what they read in the Gospel stories. And through that shared experience, the class discovered a striking pattern. The more unsavory the characters, the more at ease they seem to feel around Jesus. And the more respectable the characters, the more of a chilly response they tended to show Jesus. Yancey noted just how strange this pattern seemed since the Christian church now attracts respectable types who closely resemble the people most suspicious of Jesus on earth. And he asked some great questions. Why don't sinners like being around us? The down and out who flocked to Jesus when he lived on earth no longer feel welcome. How did Jesus, the only perfect person in history, manage to attract the notoriously imperfect? And what keeps us from following in his footsteps? What would it take for the church to become a place where prostitutes, tax collectors, and even guilt-tinged Pharisees would gladly gather? Jesus was a friend of sinners. What was Jesus' secret that we have lost? Some time ago, I, I shared the story that Dr. Tony Campolo relayed about the experience he had while staying in Hawaii for a speaking engagement he had there. For some reason, he was awakened at 3 o'clock in the morning, and he couldn't go back to sleep, so he decided to throw some clothes on and, and go out and see if he could find an early breakfast. All he could find that was open was a greasy spoon in a back alley, and so he went in and sat at the counter. The fat, jaded owner behind the counter served him black coffee and donut with a donut without so much as a smile. And as Campolo munched on this breakfast of champions, eight or nine provocative, loud prostitutes came into the greasy spoon and plopped down at the counter, seated all around it. Tony admitted that he found himself feeling pretty uncomfortable in the middle of the smoking, swearing group. And so he choked down his donut, finished his coffee, preparing to slip out of the restaurant when he heard the woman next to him tell her friend, tomorrow's my birthday. I'm going to be 39. To this, the friend replied nastily, what do you want from me, a cake? The now wounded first woman said, you don't have to be so mean. I don't want anything from you. I've never had a birthday party my whole life. Why would I expect one now? When Campolo heard that response, he made a decision in his heart. He waited until they left, and then he asked the man behind the counter, do they come here every night at this time? 
The man said, yeah. And then he asked, how about the one next to me? Does she come here every night at this time? The owner replied, yes, her name is Agnes. She's been coming here for years at this time. Why do you want to know? Campolo then asked, do you think we could throw her a party tomorrow? She said it's her birthday. A smile came across the man's stubby, chubby cheeks. He called his wife in the kitchen and said, hey, come out here. This guy wants to throw a birthday party for Agnes tomorrow. His wife was very excited about the idea. She said, Agnes is always trying to help people. It would be nice to do a little something special for her. So they made plans. At 2.30 the next morning, they would meet with Campolo bringing all the decorations and the man and his wife baking the cake. The man and the woman from the diner spread the word in the streets. And by 3.15 the next morning, all the, the women in the red light district in Honolulu were inside that little diner that Campolo had decorated from one end to the other with birthday decorations. At 3.30 on the dot, the door swung open and in walked Agnes and everyone shouted, surprise, happy birthday, Agnes. She nearly fainted. When the cake with 39 candles was carried out of the kitchen, she began to sob with joy and disbelief. When she pulled herself together, she blew out her candles, but rather than have them cut the cake, she, she said, would it be okay if I just look at it for a while? And she asked if she could take it back to her apartment. Campolo and the owner of the restaurant both shrugged their shoulders and nodded. It's your cake. Do with it whatever you want. And so she walked out of the diner holding the cake as though it were the Holy Grail, promising to be right back. When she left the room, no one knew what to do. They just kind of stared at each other blankly for several minutes until Tony stood up in the chair and said, let's pray together. There in that hole in the wall, Greasy Spoon, those street walkers and that couple that owned the diner listened as Tony Campolo prayed for God's blessing upon Agnes' life, for her health and for her salvation. Tony prayed, God, please be good to Agnes. When he finished, the man from the diner barked, I didn't know you were a preacher. What kind of church do you belong to anyway? And in one of those moments, Campolo said, when the heavens open and the spirit descends with just the right words, he answered, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> the man was silent for a moment, and then he barked back, there is no church like that. If there was, I would join it. Tony Campolo's story and Philip Yancey's piercing observations lead us to examine our own heart and the quality of our own witness. If we are the only Jesus some people will ever see, what kind of Jesus are we showing them? Are we showing them a self-absorbed Jesus who looks down his nose at sinners? Or are we showing... <coughs> A Jesus in whom the lost, hurting, and broken can find a friend. Jesus said it this way. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. My sisters and brothers, as we head toward 2014, together as a church, let us do so remembering that we are Christ's ambassadors, pleading with others in big and small ways on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Let us bear in mind each day that we are indeed the only Jesus that some people will ever see. Let us show them the Jesus who is shown in our hearts with the light of God's love. This morning, we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. And as we prepare to do that, I want to extend an invitation to everyone who's here today. <laughs> Maybe this morning you would acknowledge that you have never shared your faith in Christ because you do not have faith in Christ who shared. 
It's impossible to share something that we don't ourselves possess. And maybe this morning you feel a calling for the first time to give your heart, to give your life, to, to give everything that you have, everything that you hope for, everything that you are to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, here I am. I just want to follow you wherever you lead. You come this morning. Maybe you come from a state of brokenness. Maybe you come from a place of discouragement and despair and sin and shame. Let me tell you that you're in good company. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God sent his son to be the perfect sacrifice for each and every one of us. That we might find true abundant life in him. Come and find it today. Maybe today you're a believer, you're a follower of Christ, and, and you know it, but you also know that you're a lousy ambassador, and that the Jesus people see in you is nothing like the Jesus in the gospel stories. Maybe people see in you a Jesus who's too weak and timid to share God's love. Or maybe people see in you a Jesus who's too mean and cranky to share God's love. But either way, they don't see what they need to see in you. And you want that to be different. You want to leave this place prepared to take on a new year as the kind of ambassador that would draw others to the kingdom, saying, whosoever will may come. You come this morning. Lay aside whatever sin in your life is keeping you from true obedience to the kingdom. You come this morning and embrace whatever disciplines he's calling you to pick up so that you can live a true kingdom life, a life of love and grace and mercy. You come this morning and leave this place transformed by the Spirit of God, ready to share that transformation with anyone who would receive it. Maybe today you, you would come and just confess something. Maybe you'd come and just kneel at the altar and pray. Maybe this morning you'd come and make this your church home where together we seek to be Christ's ambassadors. Somehow in our brokenness, his light shines through us. Respond to God's spirit, however he leads your heart as we stand and we sing together.